What to tell your sons after Trayvon Martin, after Michael Brown, after Medgar Evans, after, 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 and before. Don't walk in public wearing a hoodie or jeans or t-shirts or red or blue or yellow or a ball cap. Don't wear sneakers or vans or high tops or low tops or sandals. I know this isn't exactly dinner talk, but I love you and you need to know. Don't smile, don't frown, don't say anything. Say all the right things. Don't be intelligent, don't be dumb. Don't be witty, don't be too serious. Don't grow out your hair, don't carry a pick, don't carry a comb, don't wear a bandana, don't twist your hair, don't wear dreadlocks, don't have straight hair, don't carry a brush, don't wear braids or cornrows, don't shave your head, be invisible. Don't have joy. Don't use your hands when you talk. Don't put your hands in your pocket. Don't cross your arms. Don't extend your arms. Don't have big hands. Don't have small fingers. Don't run. Don't walk slow. Don't walk fast. Don't laugh loudly. Be invisible. Be invisible. Be invisible. This isn't dinner talk, but I need you to know. Don't laugh loudly with friends. Don't laugh loudly with friends with more than three in any neighborhood, especially a suburb, especially outside, especially especially after dark, especially on the sidewalk, especially on the street, especially in the daylight, especially, especially, especially anywhere. Be invisible. Do not have joy. If a police person follows you slowly, slow down, but not too slow, tell them you need to get your wallet out. It's okay if you get your ID. If you forget your wallet, though, you could be shot. If you move too fast, you could be shot. If you move too slow, if you breathe, if you are invisible or visible, if, 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 you could be shot. As a writer, I want to provide an open doors for readers and listeners to walk through. I invite you to enter. I desperately want to create change in the world. And that change for me begins with a pen and paper. I think it's important. I think it's necessary. As a mother of two, I want to let other mothers know that your fears and your anxieties and your worries and your sleepless nights are heard and understood. At the same time, I feel a responsibility to talk about things that make people uncomfortable. I want to stand up for marginalized folks and talk for people who maybe will never be at a TED Talk or in front of a microphone. Radical change moves beyond the surface. Real and true allyship is composed of compassion, empathy, and action. Another piece. What's the matter? Your teenage baby asks you if the people that were murdered believe in God if the universe was supporting their highest good, 
if they had faith or meditated or prayed. There are calculated spaces between each teenage breath like steps or chess pieces or loading bullets. And he says to you, what determines which line you are in, mom? The one that matters or the one that doesn't matter? How do you know if you are in the mattering line? Or does it even matter? Mass, atoms, protons, neutrons, stars, gas, dust. He wants to know if maybe he's just an ancient star that's going to get eaten up by the weight of the world as a black hole thriving. If he will do all the right things, then die. If he will do all the wrong things, then die. If he will do nothing, then die. If he will do every single thing right, then die. And he gets so frustrated, he sucks his braced teeth and says to you, Mom, it doesn't matter anyway that he heard a song that said, all we are is dust in the wind. And he grabs his face to say he feels blown over like a blade of grass underneath a shiny new lawnmower. And it does not matter as if he's your baby that doesn't matter. Thank you.